Microsoft recently released Windows 25 H2 into the wild and in today's video I'm going to show you how to update to Windows 25 H2 and then I'm going to walk you through what features are applicable to Azure Virtual Desktop and also Windows Switches 5. Windows 25 H2 comes with lots of features but a lot of those are user interface features for the IT admin what features are actually useful and how can we deploy them. I'm going to walk you through two of the main features that I think are really useful, especially if you're running Azure Virtual Desktop or Windows 365. And then we're going to go and upgrade some devices. I'm going to show you how that process works. All right, if you are running Windows 10 or Windows 11, and if you are thinking of upgrading to Windows 25 H2, and you run as a virtual desktop or Windows 365, then this is definitely a video for you. All right, so Microsoft announced um, 25H2 just last week. So they made all the install media available and you can now go and deploy Windows 25H2 session host for Azure Virtual Desktop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through some of the main features and then we're actually gonna go and do stuff. So this is the Microsoft documentation page, which basically shows you what's new with Windows 25H2. I'll just point out some of the stuff I think is applicable of anyone from an IT admin perspective. First of all, there's quite a few stuff which is copilot only, so we're not going to go through that because we don't really care about that for this video. But what I'm going to do is features added to Windows 11 since 24H2, right? So what new features of 25H2 do we care about? So I think for me, the most interesting one is the policy-based removal of pre-installed apps from the Microsoft Store. This is something which anyone who runs Windows 365 or Azure Virtual Desktop know it can be a bit of a pain sometimes. We have to run scripts on the image. So we're going to go through that and explore that feature in a bit more detail. It is PowerShell 2.0 is no longer included with Windows 11 25 H2. I suspect you're all wrong, like the latest versions of PowerShell, I think it's 7.3.4 right now, but FYI, that's no longer there. Also, the WMIC command line utility has been removed for Windows 11 25 H2 as well. I know some people use that for troubleshooting, but we don't really need that much as anymore because that was very heavily dependent upon what we used to do with SCCM. So that's the main overall stuff. I think what I'm going to focus on for this video is upgrading, how do we upgrade and deploy. And then secondly, I'm going to go into detail around this new feature, the policy based removal, because that's really useful for anyone who manages Windows in the cloud. All right, so that's the overview. Well, let's see how we actually get to deploy Windows 25 H2 and how do we upgrade existing devices. So the first thing we're going to look at is how do we add a new as a virtual desktop session host for 25 H2. Microsoft have made the image available already. So what we're going to do, we'll head over into the screen, select an image, and you can see at the bottom there, we've got like Windows 25 H2. So if you want to do a nice clean deployment and you want to generate new session hosts, this is where you would do it. So you just go in there, 25 H2, um, put in all your details, and then that'll go ahead and create a Windows 11 25 H2 session host. So that's running the latest operating system. So that's all good. Um, but we don't want to deploy like all brand new session hosts. So how do we upgrade existing VM? How do we upgrade Windows 365 VMs and Windows 11 session hosts as well? All right, that's what we're going to look at next. One of the biggest features which Microsoft have enabled is the ability to do something called an enablement package. So they've actually introduced a lot of the Windows 25 H2 features in 24H2, but not actually enabled them, right? And they're not actually turned them on. What we can do is install the very latest versions and then Basically, what happens is when you upgrade to 25H2, it just flicks those features on. All you need to do is to make sure you're running like either 24H2 and just make sure you're running the very latest Windows update version. So you can see here, it depends on the August update, for example. We're going to show you how to do that. All we need is an enable package, which automatically gets installed via Windows update. But I'm going to show you how to do it via Intune. So here's the KB you need to look at. Feature updates Windows 11 25 H2 by using an enable package. So that shows you how to do that. So we'll go into Intune. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Devices and then Windows updates. So you can see here we can now create a feature update. I can then apply to my Windows 365 or my Windows multi-session hosts, okay? Or my single session hosts as well. We can go to create a feature update policy. So we'll go in there, we'll select Win 11 25 H2, for example. In here, we just make sure we select Windows 11 25 H2, make available to users as a required update or as an optional update. If you're running, obviously, single session workloads, you may want to do it as an optional, but if you do multi-session workloads, you want to make it required because you don't want users to be able to do it. Well, 
Roll it options, make the update available as soon as possible. So click next, add groups. We can just select our groups that we want to use. I've got an existing group with a number of devices in it. So I'm just going to press select and then we go next. And then that's essentially all we have to do. That will basically push out the Windows 25 H2 update to those session hosts which are in that group. That can be Cloud PCs, that can be Win AVD single session host, it can be AVD more session host, it doesn't matter. So click create and then that will go ahead and then that will push that policy to those devices. We'll log on to one of my devices, see how long that takes to update. And then we'll come back and look at the new feature around updating, removing store apps from devices. Okay, see you shortly. As you can see, we're on this Windows 365 device and this is running Windows 11 24H2. Okay, so the goal of this is we're basically going to upgrade this device on to Windows 25H2. First of all, we just need to take the name of the device. This is called CPC WAD SA44FF, right? What I'm going to do is go into the Intune portal and drop that device into the policy which I've already created. That should kick off the upgrade process onto Windows 25H2. If we go to Windows Update, on the device what we'll see is it'll say there's just two updates available if i can visual updates and stuff right so and we go ahead and in tune portal and then we'll add it to that policy and then we'll see where we go from there just a quick update i've rebooted my windows 365 device as you can see on the screen now it is installing windows 11 25 h2 all i had to do is just click check for updates and then it automatically kicked off the installation that's going to take a short while we'll let that complete and then we'll be back shortly see you shortly all right so windows 25 h2 is finished installing so that's took a few minutes took two three minutes to do so we can see we've got a restart now we're going to restart the device log back in and then we'll make sure that everything is installed correctly all right we're back on the session host also the cloud pc device if i just go in here i can actually see go to winver that's now upgraded to like windows 25 h2 so it's literally taking me a minute so all i had to do is create the update policy within in tune apply it to the device and then log on to the device and it took five minutes to update it to windows 25 h2 so much 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 quicker previously so previously they were quite big updates they took a while to download and sometimes you had issues with like implicit grades for 22h2 to 25h2 for example 24h2 this process is much easier and much much quicker kudos to microsoft for making this update more seamless Let's now go and do the Apex removal package and see if that's actually working on this cloud PC device. The next feature we're going to focus on is this policy based removal of pre installed Microsoft Store apps. Microsoft Store apps have always been a bit difficult to manage. Admins normally have to do is strip them out from the image that Microsoft gives us and then disable the Microsoft Store, for example, on multi session hosts to stop people from being able to deploy those apps. It can be challenging as well for single session hosts because you want to control what's been deployed. What we'll do today is go through and look at these settings, see what they are and see what this new feature enables us to configure a policy. And that can be an Intune policy or it can be group policy, um, which will actually go and remove um, all the store apps. Historically, this has been done via scripts and that's still the case today. And we'll see why in a second. So I'm just going to go through the documentation for you. So prereqs, this is a brand new feature for Windows 25 H2. So you need to be running Windows 25 H2 to use it. It's only applicable to enterprise and education. The most important thing is target devices, not users. This is a machine policy setting, not a user policy setting. We can use the Intune setting or group policy to do that as well. Okay. So target devices, not users. The most important thing to note, the policy based inbox app removal feature does not support multi-session environments. I attempted to run this on a multi-session host and it didn't do anything. So this is only applicable to Windows 365 and also Windows AVD single session host. If you try to apply the setting to a multi-session host, it will not do anything. It does not work. I'll go through the setting and show you what this actually does. So what we'll do now is we'll configure this and then we'll deploy this onto a Windows 365 session host and see what happens. All right, so I'm logged on to my Windows 365 device. I'm just looking at local policy, but you can also deploy this via managed group policy as well. The new setting is in the computer configuration, administrative templates, Windows components, and then app package deployment. And then you can see here, we've got this new setting, which is remove default Microsoft Store packages from the system, okay? So if we go to that, we click enable or disabled, and then from there, we get a 
a list of stuff I've got my Microsoft News, my Solitaire Collection, my NSM Weather, my Microsoft Paint. So then I can go and pick those and decide whether I want to remove it or whether I want to keep it enabled. Okay, so tick and get removes it, untick and get keeps it within the system okay so if it's not managed here obviously a user's got full control so they can go in into the store and remove an ad as much as they want to so that's how you can control it by group policy and the intune setting in the microsoft documentation is not present yet you'd need to create a custom intune policy if you wanted to manage this via intune for ease of use of showing it you today i'm controlling it by group policy but if you needed to do via intune i presume sometime in the very very near future microsoft will light this up within the intune portal but as it stands right now it's not be able to manage within the default settings within the intune portal but you'd need to create a custom policy to manage those this is a much easier way of doing it by group policy or managed by Intune rather than having to rely on a custom script to be run on your master image. Okay, we are back on the Windows 365 device system. So we told it to remove Microsoft News, Solitaire, Weather and Paint. You can see here we don't actually have Paint installed anymore and the same for Weather as well. So that's gone. And interesting enough, if we look in the event log, we can see there when the user was logging in or whether the device was booting up, it's basically saying the following packages will be installed and the following packages will be removed. We can see the jobs there from going to remove all those packages. So that's working as expected on the single session desktops, but on the multi session desktop, it didn't do anything, which kind of says to what Microsoft was saying around the fact that it's not supported on multi-session. And interestingly, when I was logging on, I did notice like the login was a bit slower. So it did seem to do those uninstalled jobs and terminate the packages during the login process as well, which is quite useful. Okay. So that's the end of today's video. Not a huge updates to Windows 25 H2. To me, two things really stand out. Second one, the ease of updating to Windows 25 H2. So it's a definitely a smaller jump than it was to go, for example, from 23 H2 to 24 H2. That's quite a big upgrade and it took quite a long time to do. Whereas this one, it literally took, as you saw, five minutes to deploy an update because a lot of the updates are pre-stage pre-installed with 24H2 so much easier path and hope this is what it's going to be like going forward from Microsoft as well. The other one around the inbox apps, I'm a bit disappointed to be honest with you. I was hoping this would be also applicable to multi-session hosts but it doesn't seem to work with multi-session hosts. If you are running single session hosts that either Cloud PC or AVD Wing single session, this is definitely a good thing. For me, the feature is definitely more needed on multi-session hosts because you want to have less things in the operating system. With a single session host, we generally don't worry about that as much, but it's good to see that feature is there now. Hopefully in the future, we'll see this for multi-session hosts as well, because I think it could be a really good feature. All right, so that's it from this week. Please subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments around the 25H2. Are you going to be deploying it? Are you holding off? So yeah, let me know and I will see you next week. Goodbye.